Let's talk about syncretism. So just to define the term, and uh, these thoughts are going to be a little bit naive because I don't really know how people use the term, etc. I know what I think it means. Um, I understand syncretism to mean uh, it's sort of a religious intellectual approach to studying a variety of different religions and traditions and seeing where there is synthesis. So as an example, if someone went back and said, you know, uh, we believe in the one God of uh, Christianity or Judaism. But when the Vikings uh, encountered Odin, they were also encountering in some form uh, a sort of uh, deflated version of the thing that we believe in now. Or they might say this about Zeus. And there would sort of be an attempt to like make a coherent picture. Now let's distinguish two different ways of going about this. One person, you could imagine an atheistic scholar, is simply studying the past, and they would make no claim about the nature of divinity. They would simply say, these things were the concepts that existed. I actually think of myself, I think of Jordan Peterson as being somewhat non-religious with a lot of his intellectual stuff, where he just is saying, here are mythical ideas that recur in a psychological sense, and he doesn't have to make a claim about divinity itself. Now, within the category of believing approaches, imagine you have someone who believes in divinity and believes in the divine in some sense. They have a variety of choices as well. So one choice they have is to say, our religion is the true religion, and these other things that existed were just confusions. There was nothing to it. It was just simply people you know, making noises in their brains. Uh, the Vikings were confused. There's a different person who says, no, actually, they were encountering something real, just not our thing. Now, just as an example of this, and I'm not picking on Baha'i people, uh, but I did encounter this in my life where I visited a Baha'i temple as a kid. It was a part of like a Jewish kind of youth groupy thing. And I remember them explaining, well, you know, God uh, revealed himself to mankind in many forms. And you could think of it like math. Like first you teach the kids addition. Then you teach them multiplication. Then you teach them whatever. Then you teach them calculus. With the obvious implication being that Baha'i was calculus in this case. So this picture is a perfect example of this. This is the painting, The Triumph of Christianity Over Paganism by Doré. And if you look at it closely, you can see, of course, Jesus at the top and all the angels, and you have all the pagan gods below being triumphed over. One form, another form in which you'll see the sort of syncretic instinct will be people who, you know, believe in something but they don't believe in a specific religion. They don't call themselves uh, adherents of a specific religion. And so they'll often just allude to the fact that many of these things have occurred over history, and then they won't say, I'm a Christian or I'm a Jew or I'm a whatever. Now I'm slowly starting to get to my point here, which is that a lot of you know people that you would call classically religious, like real believers, and they're like, yep, you know, I'm Catholic, for example, uh, they will tend to dismiss the I believe in something people as unserious. And there's a different sort of thing that they'll often see as, if not dangerous, like quite confused. An example is Jews for Jesus. People love to make fun of Jews for Jesus, in part because it's like no one from either religion really likes that. And something that's very distinctive about our unspiritual modern era is that we see questions of religion as like questions of personal choice. So it's like, you want to be this? Great. You want to be that? Great. Um, we don't seem bothered that some of these ideologies make totalizing claims about the nature of divinity, because, you know, as moderns, we don't really believe in the divine. For some people, this is fine. It's just sort of not a thing that they're thinking about. But if you've gotten to the point of believing, as I am pretty much comfortable saying that I do, that the modern spiritual ideology does exist, it just claims a non-committal nature. Uh, it sort of claims to have no opinions on a bunch of topics on which it does have opinions. You get bounced back to this question of, okay, but how do we deal with the fact of this disagreement? Essentially what we're talking about on the question of syncretism is disagreement. Which I guess is just a long-winded way of saying that I don't think modernity gets a buy on the question of syncretism. Instead, I now think of syncretism as or the question of it, you know, of whether to do it or how to do it, if you're going to do it, as consequential and honestly it should be a little bit frightening to people who are serious about trying to understand the nature of the divine. And you know, you might think that you get a buy 
due to being orthodox in some sense. So the pe thing people will try to do is they, they pick a religion, they believe in that one hardcore, maybe it's the one that their parents believed in, and then they learn their religion's answers to the nature of other religions. They don't feel compelled to reach out and try to understand or perceive the essence of what some other religious worldview saw. They don't try to see it. They don't feel like they have to. The unfortunate truth, as far as I'm concerned, is that there's nothing safe about this. If you think that there is something real to what is divine, and you think that God or the gods or whatever you are going at it from might have been revealed in many forms over time, and that perhaps human uh, humans misunderstood, right? Humans put things down in books and didn't quite get it right. The fear is that you might overlook something crucial by sitting too comfortably in your orthodoxy. Like if I read the New Testament and I read about Jesus and I say to someone, to a Christian, this was powerful. I think there's real power there. They'll say, of course there's power. You know, Jesus is the Son of God. Welcome. And they'll, you know, they'll try to bring me into the fold. If I bring that insight to, to a Jewish person, speaking broadly, they might be persuaded to say, perhaps there's wisdom there, but it's not Torah. It is not, you know, it's not the Word of God. And I'm not claiming to have answers on all of this. I think what I'm just trying to get to on a more meta level is that I'm basically kind of offended at the implication that syncretism or the effort to reconcile between these different ideas is unserious, when in fact it may be the only serious approach to spirituality. It may be that the insistence on the comfort of not reconciling with the existence of other traditions is the essence of unspirituality. Okay, I went a little far in saying it's the essence of unspirituality. That's a little bit too extreme. It's more likely that it comes out of some kind of ignorance, especially historical ignorance. And history is one of these things where we don't really believe it's real by default. It takes time and effort and serious study and honestly miserable labor to come to actually seriously believe that you exist in time, in a timeline that contained the Ottomans and the Bulgars and the Magyars and the ancient Chinese, etc., etc. Maybe what I'm saying here is, if you want to tell me about the nature of God, tell me also how to relate to, as part of it, how to relate to the ancient Egyptians and the violent, orgiastic, sacrificial rituals of the Aztecs and the major Abrahamic religions and the thing that, you know, Mencius and Confucius were trying to reach towards when they talk about the nature of the good. I want to see how these, not are one thing, but how they can fit in one picture of the world. And some people you can see are unfortunately just too dim to think that these things were really real. And you can just see it when somebody talks about it and they think it's some textbook shit. They don't think that there were Aztecs there. They didn't really think about the, the fucking blood-drenched priests with their hardened hair from years of blood accumulating in the thing. Blah, blah, blah. Um, that just is, uh, it, it's just ignorance and that's forgivable, but you have to learn and look back at the thing. I can almost sense an objection which is, you can imagine someone saying, listen, dude, like most people are not even well seated enough in their own religion to go start exploring other ones and seeing what they have to offer. And that could be true. Notably, the same skills you need to understand your own religion are at play when looking at other ones. It's like to reconcile the fact that the uh, Old Testament, the Bible says that Abraham was commanded to kill his son. That's reconciling with something alien, for sure. And in any case, I'm, this kind of meta-ideological thing I'm describing is just not accessible to noobs to the area. It's very hard to do. So really who I'm talking to is people who think they've got some truth and think the question is real. Again, mostly modern people don't think these questions are real, don't think that they matter. But if you think they matter and you think you've got some kind of answer there, I just want to have some kind of understanding of what a high standard it is to claim to have answers in the area. And I'm not saying it's impossible. I think it's possible. And this is not the gospel of skepticism. This is the gospel of one who yearns for belief, but cannot seem to push aside the existence of many compelling claims about the nature of divinity that have existed throughout time, and uh, which have been spoken in such beautiful poetry that the words themselves uh, change you, and you cannot let those go. That's all I got for now.